Hey guys, welcome to Three Mississippi. Sid here. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we are going to be burning an entire pasture. It's time to light some fires. That's right. Beulah says that's right. We're gonna go light some fires. gonna get right back to burning that field in just a minute guys but I want to show you what else happened this week too we had some bird arrivals that were super important one of which was the first set that we were going to be raising here in Mississippi and it was also time to give Buck back the goat that we borrowed to get our girls in a family way and we did it in kind of an interesting way take a look I knew the minute she brought the box out which set of birds this was um, because I could tell by their little their little chirps. These are the goslings. Um, only one of which is mine. One of the ganders in that box is mine. The other two are my girlfriend Jen. I had a basically a technically two free birds um, because the one bird died like a couple hours after I got it. Um, so they refunded me for that. And then they refunded me uh, for the bird that they sent me, the gosling that they sent me, my gander that was supposed to be a Sebastopol, which is what these are, but they accidentally sent me a Roman tufted, which is not what I wanted. He's a doll though, gotta love me some Roderick. But um, he's not the right bird to make the right babies with my girls. So they owed me a gander. So I got the credit for my gander. So he's here and then Jen got uh, a gander and a gosling. Well, they're both goslings right now, but one's supposed to be male, one's supposed to be female for her. So I'm gonna go get these guys home and settled. I got the little butt warmer on right now uh, to get them preheated. <laughs> and uh, we gotta, we're in Tupelo right now, so we got about an hour ride back home. I'm gonna try to hit up Jen right now and see if I can go pick up the carrier for uh, Buck so that I can bring him back to her later. The turkeys are here. I just went and picked them up. Here's the baby. There's all the little turkey poles. There they are. That one's looking a little, little, little not so good. All right, let's get these guys in here. Missed that light though, that's good. Yeah. So we had to get creative to get the goat in the back of the truck because my back is not happy and I can't lift him. Normally I would have just wrestled him into the back, but Which is uh, why her back's not happy. Because I do stuff like that. <laughs> then my back goes out and then he yells at me because I do something stupid and my back goes out. But anyway, he's in the back of the truck now. Do I yell at you though, really? Well, not yell. Or do I just point out? You point out my stupidity. <laughs> Frankie's on her way over here with the tractor with a pallet on it. And Sid leans over this crate to try to pick it up. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I was just trying to do something. I bought you a force multiplier. Multiply. 
<laughs> but when we get there, we won't have a force multiplier. <laughs> You'll have gin. <laughs> Mike and our neighbor Ross decided to burn some of the in-between between our land and their land because the power company had cut a tree and it fell in our neighbor's pasture, but it was kind of partially on ours. So they're just burning off that, all those pine needles and stuff right now while well, the wind is calm. And Frankie's apparently practicing for color guard in between cutting with the tractor. <laughs> Never a dull moment. I'm just up here editing. Happen to look out the window and see smoke. <laughs> you never know. Just never know. So he's cutting the brake line right now around what we're going to be burning and it's this big kind of weird strip in the middle that's got a lot of sagebrush in it. He's going to make a ring around it, fire break, and then we'll start lighting it off, I guess. <laughs> Preferred, but it's not windy enough that I'm gonna pull the plug uh -huh. because we got four days of rain coming and We really need to burn this pasture. Yeah, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna burn into the wind Yep. All right, so where are we gonna start the fire? We're gonna start it back there Because it wasn't the wind blowing this now it's going the wind's that blowing way. out of the south. So now we're gonna start it down there. Nope, that's with the wind If, said, if you let the wind push the fire, no, we're gonna go against the wind so the wind's going to be constantly blowing from the south. We're going to start our fire on the north end and burn towards the wind. That's going to slow the fire down. If you start the fire on the other end, which is where we were going to start it, it'll go so fast that you won't be able to contain it and keep it under control. So now I cut a fire break with the mower real low all the way around what we're going to burn. Sorry about that. Ah, Michael. It's snowing. Can you stop? Um, so your guys' jobs, one of you on one side, one of you on the other. All right. Okay? Your job is as the fire burns south from the north, you keep an eye on that fire break. That edge. And as, as the fire tries to creep, because it's going to try to creep out that edge, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of dead, dry grass there, but it's going to creep real slow. Yep. So you're just going to be putting it out as it goes. All right. And then I'm going to be everywhere on the mower in case I need to cut another fire break or jump in with a mower and run over something with you? but make sure you stay to your side yeah. and you stay to your side and no yelling and screaming just to communicate because we can't hear what you're saying so yeah. if you yell or scream that means i need to come to you right now right. not just hey how's it going over there right because you know audibly i don't know what you said yeah. so if you yell to get my attention i'm coming to you right now right. let's go light a fire so when we first start the fire, we want to manage it close and make sure that we get an area burned forward far enough that we're confident we're not going to have, because there's not going to be big embers here. There's not large fuel here. Yeah. You know, this was all mowed last year. So this fuel is going to burn fast and hot and then be gone. Guys, we are out here on Silver Pasture. Uh, we are doing a little bit of an experiment with our neighbor Ross. He's actually bailing half the hay for us right now and we're seeing if we can pick it up with Kenny, our little Kubota tractor. Uh, he's going to burn half the field and half the field he's haying. So this pasture I'm standing in right now is a 
long skinny pasture probably about eight or ten acres i've never actually measured it it's kind of separated from the rest of our property by this creek over here and that's a big ditch by the way it's i don't know 30 feet wide 25 feet wide and a good 15 feet deep and then on the other side of this pasture over here there's another ditch and they run together back there the smaller ditch runs into the bigger ditch back there so this pasture is isolated and it's what some people here would call kind of a bottomland between ditches and it's super flat and we are just not using it right now we had it cut last year for hay and then we decided not to cut it because we got into the whole regenerative farming concept and uh spoke to one of our neighbors who is very much into regenerative farming and he said let's do an experiment say hi to frankie hi frankie Frankie is uh, stacking hay bales right now. I thought you were waving me down. Oh no! I didn't see. No, I was just You're doing. Waving this around. I'm doing all, this. doing all this. You thought I was calling you? I thought you were waving me down. Oh well. That's the only reason I came over there's here. There's hay bales over here, so that's yeah, fine. I'll grab one of these and, <laughs> and get on about your way. There she goes. Got her a bale. Headed down to the other end. Way down there. So anyway. As I was saying, this pasture, we did not cut it this, this year for hay. We did go ahead and bush hog it a couple of times, and we just cut it and let it lay, okay? That, the idea there is you're not taking anything away. When you, when you cut it for hay, look right here. When you cut this, okay, and then you bale this up and you take it away, you take all these nutrients that grew up out of the ground, and you put it into a bale, and you take it somewhere else and you're depleting the soil, okay? This is the, the regenerative thought process. Instead, what they like to do is they like to strip graze, mob graze, intensive uh, grazing. There's a lot of different versions of it and really try to do minimal uh, hay. So if you're grazing properly, the way some of these guys think, you're gonna have better pasture and uh, longer, you know, during, the, during the, se the growing season for your livestock. And then during the winter time, of course, you just want to make sure that they maintain body condition. They don't lose anything. And you'll feed hay, a little bit of hay, during that time frame. That's the idea. I am a beginner at this thought process, and uh, but I'm very interested in it. So our neighbor said, hey, let's run an experiment, okay? He has, he's, he's managing beef cattle on thousands of acres. And there's a lot of land just like this. And he wants to know what's the benefit of burning or is it going to hurt it? You know, uh, is it going to wipe out, you know, some of the grasses that he wants? So he's like, let's do the experiment on your pasture and I'll come over and bale half of it for you and you keep the hay and then you burn the other half and we see how it looks next year. That's a good deal for me. Um, what he bailed in half of this field is more than we'll use this winter. So I said, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to manage this end while it's get started burning the first 10 feet or so real well all right once he gets past that then we can just start managing the sides you ready to light a fire there it goes
as planned. I know. No, it's, it's trying to get on. Yeah, it is. It's just too dry. Up right when we lit the fire and it hopped break. So my had to get in there and kind of cut around it and put part of it out. We cut another break here so we can do it in smaller sections. And it's burning like crazy because everything's real dry. It hasn't rained in uh, probably about a week and a half. So it's hot <laughs> by that fire. I'll try to get some good footage. So and the wind, here's the wind again. Not windy all day until right now, of course. Almost just die. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. Craving marshmallows right now. Huh? Craving marshmallows right now. <laughs> I'm craving my life. <laughs> Here Burning that field and that storm is coming in. So we've got about half the field burned right now. We've been at it for probably about two and a half hours now. And um, Frankie had her friend Morgan come over to kind of help maintain the lines. And our neighbor Ross came over and helped with the other side with Mike. Um, but I actually have to take Morgan back into town. We are having rain this whole week we're supposed to. So he wants to make sure that they can get this all burned um, all the way back from here to there. So we're only about the halfway point, so I don't think they're going to be done till it's like almost 530 right now. I don't think they're going to be done till about eight. Well, today's the big eclipse. It's a, a little after noon right now and the street light just came on because it's dark right there and uh this is probably it's real cloudy today we're supposed to be having severe thunderstorm right now but it's kind of all around us just not hitting us and uh the sun should be right about over there but it's too cloudy so you can't see anything but this is the big bad scary eclipse from northern mississippi this is it this is as good as it gets, people. So, gird your loins. This is it. Animals don't seem to care. It's a little dark, but it's fine. I don't see the nuclear, biological, and radiological warfare team. Yeah. Or the National Guard. They're coming for you, don't worry. Probably. <laughs> well, guys, it's the next day. Uh, and today's actually the day of the big crazy eclipse that 
we just had, uh, I guess some places are still kind of having it. Ours is mostly over here from what we can see. Uh, we also had a big thunderstorm that just finished and we're expected to have several more thunderstorms over the next 48 hours. They've got us on a flood watch, but we don't really flood where we are. So it would have to be like the big one for it to really affect us. You can see this whole field is burned. Just this back section is not, which is maybe, I don't know, maybe about an acre uh, towards the back here, which is where Mike's deer plot is in that back corner. They left because we still have some uh, hay bales that was off of that side of silver that are stacked over there. Last night I left, I took, took Morgan into town to drop her off at youth group, but Mike and Frankie stayed here to finish burning the remainder of these sections. This was part of an experiment, guys, that we did. We started it, uh, you know, really uh, at the end of summer, beginning of fall, when we hayed that side and he cut this side and let it lay. Uh, and then the plan was to burn this side and really see what the difference is in the two sides and kind of see how this side comes back versus that side coming back. Uh, we had to kind of wait to do it because we had some real windy conditions and we had some some rain come through several times and so yesterday was like the first day where it was the right time of year the conditions were right and we could actually burn this it'd be interesting to see over the next couple of weeks how this side comes back versus that side we know for ourselves the area that we burned around the pond last year uh, really came back very lush and green very quickly um, and really flourished. I would imagine the same thing would happen here, uh, but we'll see. Anytime you have to clear land or burn an area to get rid of certain things, uh, you know, there's always the fear of, you know, a fire getting out of control or the wind picking up. And so that's why we made sure we had enough of us on hand um, to keep an eye on the different areas that the fire could go if the wind picked up or if something, you know, went wrong. But it went pretty smoothly yesterday. We had a little bit of the, there in the beginning that you may have noticed where it kind of took off towards the road a little bit uh, because the wind shifted and picked up <laughs> right when we started burning because that happens. You get a sudden gust of wind every once in a while. We were able to get it under control and push the fire this way and keep it going and get it get it done. So, so it, was, it was good. It went well, but the creek is actually kind of filled up a little bit after this last little bit of rain we had, but you can kind of smell it in the air right now and the bugs are out and it's kind of a beautiful day even though it's kind of cloudy and overcast and we had the weird eclipse thing today and we had the the storms this is kind of a break in the storms that we're having but i thought i would run out here and just kind of show you guys the the, the finished product for now of this big burn that we did i mean it was a, a little bit of an undertaking yesterday and it took them a few hours to get it done safely. They cut breaks. I don't know if you can kind of see there's breaks every so often that they cut to kind of manage it a little bit better and then start kind of pushing it a little bit more slowly. Wow, guys, today's Wednesday. We burned silver over there. You can see the black through the trees. We burned that on Sunday and we have been having crazy rain. This pond is almost overflowing. This is usually down like two more feet there's like a ledge right there it's almost spilling out down here into the pasture um we had just i mean we're we've been on a flood watch and a flood warning um and we'll continue to be until tomorrow afternoon but so that's the main pond right and then i'm walking down right now to the mud hole that we call the mud hole because generally it's just a mud hole there's not usually much water in it but guys it is like it's full right now it's full i'm gonna get down here a little closer i mean not it's not a big that's why we call it the mud hole it's not a big pond but it's a little little bit and I, there's a runoff which i don't know if i can get to right now because this has grown I don't know if I want to go. Yeah, it's running off. Let's see. I think I can get there. The briars aren't too bad right here. Um, lots of poison oak though, so I gotta be careful. But yeah, so this, this is the runoff from the mud hole. This is what Mike wants to 
fix um, that spot right there um, kind of runs down here when it overflows that's why that mud hole never stays really full because it just trickles on down into the creek down there that creek on Sunday when I was looking at it while we were burning that field was a trickle it's like a raging river right now I could hear water rushing and I went holy crud that creek is full guys I can't get down there safely right now from that side I'm, I'm gonna walk a little further to see but I mean it is raging through these trees absolutely raging I mean that fallen log that's there usually you can just walk under it there's no walking under it right now so this is like almost to the road the culvert is kind of right behind this little hill which I'm trying to get to a spot where you can see it I have never seen it this full since we bought this place I have not seen it this near this full this is absolute insane Insane. Insane. You're wondering why I'm walking through your pasture? You can follow me a little bit. I found found an old piece of wire that was chilling in the pasture over there, so I'm taking it out. Alright, I'll deal with that in a minute. Hi mama. Hi. Did you need loves? You are a muddy mess. Did you go roll in the mud? I think you did. You love rolling. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna walk down here. Bueller's probably gonna follow. Yeah, she loves to go for walks with me. Um, when I go and do stuff in her pasture, she always wants to follow me. <laughs> it's like her favorite hobby. As long as she's had her snack. She had her snack already. She had her treats this morning. So, okay. Oh, honey, that's a little close, mama. She literally just gave me a flat tire. She likes to be all up in your stuff when you're walking sometimes. And she can walk a little faster than I can. So sometimes I have to double time it. But she's gonna follow me, apparently. All right, this spot down here, across the other side of the pasture, uh, used to be actually right there, I think is where our access point is that we usually use, not the not the ladder that Mike and Frankie built right before hunting season. Look at this, guys. I mean, normally there's another, I would say the water is like probably about five feet deep right now because I know where the edges of this are right here. And that's usually about where my head is. Uh, like I have to step up to start climbing out when we go in the creek. Never seen the creek this full. I mean, I, I mean, technically this was a flash flood. They did give us a flash flood warning and this I think would qualify, but it's, I mean, the water is real muddy, obviously, but it's running so, swiftly i really want to get down there but i'm scared if i go down here because it's so like even just where i'm walking right now is so marshy i'm afraid i'm gonna slip and fall and yes i do have my phone with me however it's early <laughs> mike's still sleeping so if i were to fall in there and need help and try to call him first of all my phone would be wet and probably not work and uh number two he wouldn't hear the phone but man, I really want to get down in there. Like really, really badly, I want to go down in there. It's hard to tell. Sometimes I see stuff floating down and I'm like, is that a tree branch or a water moccasin? <laughs> Try to see if there's like creatures floating by. Mostly looks like just logs, but I'm sure there's creatures in there. But you can see through the trees there, all the black. So this is gonna, that's gonna make all that black right through there on the other side of the pasture of the creek there. That's gonna make it just go crazy, all this rain we just got. But man, I've never seen the creek that full. What about you, Beulah? Have you seen the creek that full before, Mama? Get back in Beulah's pasture here. Everything's just muddy. 
You guys can probably hear my muck boots just squishing. Squishing, squishing. Now we just get to watch and see how this field recovers from that and uh, if it ends up looking any differently than the other half of the pasture. So the pasture experiment will continue. Thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you. And as always, stay blessed and safety's off. Awesome.